Okay, this is not the video I intended to come back on this channel with, but I'm over here because yesterday I was looking through my files for something and I came across something that reminded me of something that I said maybe a year or so ago. And I'm seeing that I've been in violation of that something that I'm going to have to make an amendment to. And I'll get to that later, but let me run through a few things first. Remember Wanda Sykes? Back in the day, she was hot in the... She was hot in the 90s, early 2000s. Then later, bam. She pops up with a white mate. And I don't bring it up because I care about interracial unions. But I bring it up because remember all of that stuff she used to say about white people. Describing them as the biggest detriment to black people on earth. Then pops up next to one. <laughs> You do the two of us. How much? <laughs> Richard now, I used to work in this warehouse a long while back. Long, long while back. Like long time Sal ago. Share an office. And, and I used to have to, uh, well, just sitting there and he goes, oh, if I wanted to work there, I, I had to, pants. but it's horrible. I used it's to like have to listen to, and I forget the order, but I think it was <laughs> Dr. Laura first, then Rush Limbaugh I recently began day and the only relief I got sick? came later when Howard Stern About came college co -ed, Susan and I had to work in the office next to the boss and he was into those folks. And I was there on an infamous day, I'll call it, where right. Rush Limbaugh this described right. drug addicts as the scourge of the earth and said drug dealers should be put to death. About a, about a week later, busted. Busted as a heroin addict. Sending his maid to get his dope. This poor woman probably doing it to keep her job. To have a job. And I bring up those two examples, Wanda Sykes and Rush Limbaugh. I bring them up just to say that just because you hear somebody railing against someone or something, it don't automatically mean that they hate it. Sometimes it does, but other times it means that they are the very thing that they appear to hate. Sometimes people attack people, places, and things because they're uh, jealous of it, or envious, or they covet. And they may genuinely have hate, but that hate could be because they wish they were it. Now, when they let the bug out on everybody, a lot changed for me, especially financially, and not right away either. I, I'd say uh, over the course of maybe a year, I watched about 90% of everything I eat off of coronavirus too. Damn near all of my daily bread slowly and steadily got shut down. And it changed a lot of the way I think about things. Some things I think of in the same way. Some I've had to adjust a bit. But other things I just don't care about no more at all since they let this thing out. Even the black power people that I'm known for dragging up and down the streets. Even them. The thing I'm known for. I have little to no interest in even talking about them anymore. I hardly ever do it when. At first I was doing it several times a week for years. It's a lot of things I don't even, I don't see in the same way. Me creating a cash app after being on here uploading videos for maybe 10 years without asking for nothing. That app is a simple, is a symbol of just how much I don't give a damn about certain things either at all or not in the same way. Now the conspiracy theorists. A long while back I said that I don't bother them. That's what I said. That's what I was talking about when I said I was reminded of something. I said that I don't try to expose them or debunk them because I understood that for the most part it was just entertainment. But for a while I've been doing just that. I've been speaking against them. I forgot that I said that I don't do that. I forgot. But since they've let this thing out and turned the world upside down with it, they're not entertainment to me anymore. Now since they've let this bug out, I've been listening to the conspiracy crowd with a different ear. Been looking at them with different eyes now. And I look at them as aiding and abetting in this whole thing. Stay with me, Max. You set me up. No, I didn't set you up. You lied to me. No, I'm trying to help you. Let me help you.
among the conspiracy theorists crowd, the conspiracy genre, the truth of folks, many of them I found actually worship the horror and doom and gloom that they constantly talk about. Rwanda Sykes and Rush Limbaugh, they actually worship the devilishment that's going on. Like many of them claim to believe in the Bible, but the one they actually worship in that book is actually the devil. And I'm not going to get too far into what I mean by that right now, but I can't see it. Like the continuous talk of impending doom and how everything is scripted and this is a hoax and that's a hoax. That's a stage crisis actor and he's a shield and she's a shield. And there's a... They're all shields. Everybody is fake. Everything is fake. The war we see in Russia and Ukraine is actually an act being filmed in a bunker in Area 51. So they'll tell people that everything and everybody is fake and part of the elite's doomsday plan, except for themselves. Had I not made Schindler's List, I was still using Everybody and everything is fake except for them. Ryan, and only in the battle sequences. The rest of the film, the story part of the film is not documentary. Well, and it's not approached that way, but but how come their Bible wouldn't be part of the big like script? Real footage, combat cameramen. We go look up the name of the person who made it possible for everybody to have a Bible. That had I not made Schindler's List, because that put a book in the hands of everybody when that the, book was never intended to, for that. To glorify violence and to make this that would be the devil's work. Attractive. Or the predictive programming conspiracy theorists call it. They'll say that globalists do it to. Desensitize people. You know, keep showing tragedy and misery and impending doom. Conspiracy theorists describe predictive programming as a weapon imperialists use to uh, sedate the masses. Meanwhile, predictive programming is the very thing that conspiracy theorists have been doing this entire time. But they do provide a lot of things that people need to know. A lot of things. But to do all that, only to say that there's nothing we can do about what's going on. How more predictive can the programming be than that? To reveal all these plans of how these demons want to kill off everybody and, and, and enslave the rest of humanity, the ones that remain. Only to say, and there's nothing we can do about it. Instilling hopelessness. How is that not predictive programming? The path, and by conspiracy the theorists, I don't mean someone who will talk about a conspiracy theory. By conspiracy theorists, I mean people who are only known for that. They seem to be able to talk about nothing but conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theorist is their persona, their character. You know them by nothing else. Okay? And that's all I wanted to say. I figured I'd get on here and fix that thing that I said I don't do, but hey, things change. And the covert devil worship is not new to me either. I've been said that I noticed that years ago, but like I said, since they let this bug out, I view things with different eyes and ears now.